What's up, gang? Chris Card's back. Through the Mail Monday. First of four returns coming to us from Las Vegas, Nevada. Hope everyone had a great weekend. Enjoyed their football. Looks like we've got some vintage for you once again this week. Mickey Missalata. 1954 tops. Too big for a top loader. There is a signature card. He did not fill out the back. He played briefly with the Phillies. In fact, uh, this is his only card. He had nine plate appearances in 17 games with the Phillies. Uh, he couldn't hit much. He was a great fielder, very good fielder. Uh, Phillies shipped him off to the Miami Marlins. Little known fact, in uh, 1956 to 1960, the Miami Marlins were a AAA franchise in the International League. So that's a fun little fact for you. And uh, he had great, great defense. He just could not hit. So that was his problem. After baseball went on to own a carpet business in New York, I'm not quite sure what that entails, selling carpet, installing carpet, or just tearing up carpet, which everyone enjoys. Not sure uh, exactly what he did, but he doesn't do that anymore. He's now in Vegas. And of course, there is his info, guys. Thank you, Mickey. On to the next. Okay, gang, our next return coming to us from Georgia. No surprise here. It's going to be Drew Barres. Drew has a couple cards in Stars and Stripes, playing with the 15 and under team. So he shared this address on Instagram and Twitter, and um, it was my duty as a owner of several of his cards to send them off for a TTM request. And here they are. There it is, signed nicely. Drew Barres, class of 23, and... There's the index card, also signed very nicely. Super cool. Um, yeah, he's uh, he's gonna be 16 in December. Why don't you take a seat right over there? So, is this crossing a line? I feel if you have a baseball card, um, this is uh, this is the kind of stuff that's gonna happen. So, thank you, Drew. Good luck in social studies and and homeroom. Now he's got cards. He's got like signed cards in the set. So. Does he get paid for that? I mean, how's that work? I mean, he can't get paid because then he'd be a, he'd stop being an amateur, right? So I, I don't know how this works, but there it is, guys. I'm sorry. All right, gang. Phoenix, Arizona. Sally Ride in her sweet perm staring back at us from the stamp position. And we've got Sterling Slaughter. All right. Index card signed very nicely in blue ink. Oh, look at that. 1964 Chicago Cubs inscription. And there is, of course, a 1965 Tops, two of those, and a 64 Tops rookie, along with Fred Norman. So, very nice return from Sterling Slaughter. Some more vintage. He played 51 innings for the Cubs in 1964. Those are all of his cards right there, 64 and 65. And, um, yeah, he went 2-4. and four. Both his wins came against the Milwaukee Braves, so I guess you could say he owned the Braves in 1964. Look at that nice signature. I did request the inscription, as you see with my little sticky note, for those that are into getting uh, inscriptions. That's an easy way to do it. Sticky note. Ask them politely, and hopefully they'll do it, and he did. Nice return from Sterling Slaughter. On to our last return. And we have a JD Legends Promotions request. They have a bunch of players under their wing. You send them money and they do the rest. Send them money and the cards. So we've got... Uh, not sure who. I sent a few off. I sent Tommy Davis off again for my 74 tops. And we've got George Foster. George Foster. These were $15 a pop. And I got this because I want to get Jim Rice on that as well. Should look really good. Got two of those, in fact, the home run leader cards. So that card will end up costing me twenty-five dollars. I think the card itself cost me a buck, buck a piece. And here's an eighty-four. Man, he's got dinged up. Eighty-four tops for my set and seventy-four tops for my set. Looked really nice. Um, George Foster was a pretty good hitter. Five-time All-Star, two-time World Series champ with the Reds in seventy-five, seventy-six. 
NL MVP in 1977. Also won a ring with the Mets in 1986. Of course, the Mets did a super Mets thing in about 1981. Um, the Reds did not want to re-sign a diminished Foster for what he was asking. Uh, Mets gave him 10 million bucks for five years and said, hey, we'll take you because we're terrible and we need someone like you to jumpstart this franchise. And the, ju- the, the franchise was jump-started, but it was jump-started by, of course, you know, getting Keith Hernandez, landing Gary Carter, the youngsters, Doc Gooden, Daryl Strawberry. All those, ga- all those guys really helped out. George Foster had a couple decent years when he had some protection in the lineup, but otherwise he was sort of a disappointment, a letdown to his contract. You guys remember that fight with Eric Davis and Ray Knight? at third base that I did during my 86 Mets TTM. Um, That's when, of course, um, Eric Davis was pinch running for Pete Rose, who was managing and pinch hit for himself and got a hit. I mean, that was was a story I didn't tell during that fight either. That was wild into itself. But anyway, long story short, uh, Foster sat on the bench and did not go out there with his team during the brawl, which was a big no-no back then, especially on that 86 Mets team. So he basically was already a bench player, but they made it official the next day saying Kevin Mitchell was going to replace him in left field as their everyday left fielder, the young Kevin Mitchell. Of course, um, Foster wasn't happy with that. He said the move was racially motivated. Of course, Kevin Mitchell is pretty black, so that was a confusing comment by Foster. And um, he was eventually released in August and replaced on the roster by Lee Mazzilli, which was a good move. Uh, They did give him a ring after they won the World Series in a third share of the World Series bonus. So that was nice of the Mets to do that. Um, But there's um, a nice long George Foster story for you. Uh, Does lots of humanitarian work. uh, Good dude. Um, But if you want his autograph, it's going to be 15 bucks. And that is it. Hope everyone enjoyed this week's Through the Mail Monday for returns. Pretty decent. Hope everyone enjoyed the extra videos from last week. I've still got the Celebrity TTM coming up. I'm putting that together still, so that'll be ready this week as well. So keep an eye out for that. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. I do this every single Monday, as well as miscellaneous videos throughout the week. Would love to have you join us for those. And that's it, guys. Let me know what you thought of this week's returns down below in the comments. Stay safe out there, and I'll talk to you later. See ya.